what is the attraction of alcoholic beverages? Is it the taste of the ethanol molecule that makes alcohol irresistible? The reaction that mice and rats have to alcohol has been studied in more depth than the reaction of any other mammal. Dr. Pierre Vincenzo Piazza studies small rodents in his laboratory in Bordeaux. If we give a mouse a bottle of sugared water, then it is immediately drawn to it. If we give a mouse that has never drank alcohol a bottle that contains sugared water with 15% alcohol content, then it refuses to drink it until it's thirsty. If we give a bottle of each liquid to a mouse, then it will not be interested in the alcohol solution whilst the sugared water remains accessible. The facts are clear. In the first instance, rodents do not like the taste of alcohol, even when it's mixed with sugar. There has not been much research done on the reaction that different animals have to alcohol. In nature, Drosophila flies are the exception, and for good reason. They like alcoholic environments and are attracted to very ripe or rotting fruit, which can contain up to two or three degrees of alcohol. It's where they eat and lay eggs and where larvae develop. Unlike mice, we can assume that this insect likes the taste of alcohol since it consumes significant quantities of it all year long. Ulrike Heberlin has studied the relationship between fruit flies and alcohol for over 20 years in her laboratory in San Francisco. It seems that it actually shifts the curve to the left. What we can do in the laboratory is we can give flies a choice to drink food which contains sugar or food that contains alcohol. During the tests, 20 to 50 fruit flies are placed in tubes. They have had no prior contact with alcohol. The flies are so small that it's necessary to use glass straws that are less than a millimeter in diameter as bottles. The green solution is sugared water. The blue solution is sugared water with 15% alcohol content. Will the fruit flies be attracted to the blue alcohol solution? Given the natural transparency of their abdomens, there's no need for a breathalyzer to detect the presence of alcohol in the flies. The test result is 100% green. As with the mice, at first contact, these small flies have an aversion to alcohol. What about human beings, the eternal drinkers? Are they the exception to the rule in the animal kingdom? If you give wine, even a mouton Rothschild, to a 14-year-old child who's never drunk alcohol, or to a 10-year-old child, they'll tell you that it's disgusting. L'alcool seul n'est pas vraiment euh, attractif à, à déguster. C'est parce qu'il est toujours accompagné d'autres composés qui vont donner un peu d'arôme que ça va devenir une boisson agréable. People do not drink 40% pure alcohol. An industry has developed wine, whiskey, armagnac, cognac. The taste of alcohol is transformed. Initially, most people have to force themselves to drink. Alcohol intake, even in humans, is a learned behavior. We start drinking socially, even if we don't like the taste of it. If alcohol doesn't taste good, but almost everyone consumes it, then this tiny molecule must have a secret power.
Its power is evident in nature. Hundreds of thousands of different animal species play a role in the reproduction process. They involuntarily transport nectar and seeds. Alcohol plays a part in this process. It is present in sugar juices and evaporates in the wind. This gives off a scent that attracts animals to a food source. Whilst animals don't like the taste of alcohol at the outset, they're drawn to its odor. People have mimicked in the laboratory plumes of ethanol emanating from a source of ethanol. And it's very clear that flies fly and steer to maintain their flight within that plume, which is really just a high concentration of ethanol odor. And they follow that to the source, and that's how they find the fruit. German scientific researcher Frank Wiens has made amazing discoveries concerning the role of alcohol in the relationship between plants and animals. His studies take place in the Malaysian forests in Southeast Asia. It started 20 years ago when the scientists stumbled almost accidentally upon some rather unusual wild palm trees. The Burton palm, a tree that doesn't necessarily need to be visible for its presence to be felt. First of all, there's a very strong smell that is actually uh, sensible from quite far apart and that resembles the smell of a brewery. The heady scent of fermentation comes from the flowering tops that blossom and in all seasons. Each flowering top has approximately 1,000 brown shell-shaped flowers. They are prickly and tough. It didn't take the research very long to find the source of the odor. The flower bud is shaped, is built, is designed like a brewing chamber. A rich and sweet nectar accumulates inside the buds. As soon as the slightest crack appears between two petals, yeast that is found on the exterior of the bud kicks into action. An intense fermentation period starts inside each flower. It lasts for around three months. Carbon dioxide is produced, and this creates compression and nature's equivalent of champagne. Animals are attracted to the odor of the fermented palm nectar. The animal consumers do not have a choice. If they consume the sugary nectar for fuel, then they will also swallow large doses of alcohol. The alcohol content can be up to 3.8%, which is within the range of a, of a normal beer. For nectar, uh, this is the highest alcohol content ever found. The flowers on the Burton palms are extremely popular. There's a constant swarm of insects around the trees. Even geckos come to the tree to consume its delicacies. The researcher makes his most fascinating discoveries during the night. As well as being surrounded by insects, the blossoming tops are the scene of a ballet composed of seven species of nocturnal mammals. It's an extraordinary phenomenon. The researcher uses discrete infrared lighting for his nighttime observations. The first animal to visit the tree is the common tree shrew, a mammal that is active during dusk and dawn.
It's then time for the night visitors to appear. As the hours pass, at least four species of rats and mice come to the tree. The slow loris is a primate that weighs around 500 grams and is closely related to the lemurs of Madagascar. It is the largest of the animals that regularly frequent the tree to consume the nectar. The most fascinating night visitor is the pen-tailed tree shrew. It is a small tree shrew that weighs less than 50 grams. The researcher filmed this species for the first time in its natural habitat. The pen-tailed tree shrew is a loyal customer. He spends more than two hours per night drinking champagne in his local bar. To verify the quantity of alcohol that is being consumed, Frank Wiens regularly conducts chemical analysis on hair taken from the animals that drink at the tree. Today, he is analyzing hair taken from a common tree shrew. The concentration of the biomarker in the hair indicated excessive drinking. Similar concentrations have only found in very few excessive drinkers in humans. Burton palm regulars don't have any choice. If they want to consume nectar, then they have to drink alcohol. Frank Wiens decided to investigate the link between the production of alcohol and the presence of seven different species of mammals. As he predicted, animals play a key role in the palm tree reproduction process. The Burton palms produce alcoholic nectar non-stop throughout the year and various mammals populate the trees and the surrounding area. Nectar is produced on a daily basis for three months before the flowering tops externalize their stamens and then produce the fruits. Mammals in the area carry pollen in their hair from flower to flower and from tree to tree. This process is one of Mother Nature's secrets. The incomparable scent of alcohol discreetly connects the animal world and the plant world. <laughs> 